So we find ourselves heading into what looks like is going to be a strong El Nino. We haven't had a strong one in, well, since 2016 was the last really strong one. But the conditions that we find ourselves in with this El Nino are quite different from any other one we've ever seen. Uh, and that is because there's a lot going on in the climate system right now that's connected to the climate crisis. And so a, a typical El Nino and the opposite of that is La Nina, which we've been in for the last three years or so. We understand pretty well what the weather patterns look like associated with those two phases of El Nino, La Nina, but I think it's gonna be very different this year. So what's so different this time? Well, in addition to this strong El Nino, which uh, I should add, when we have strong El Ninos, we often set new global high temperature records. So we're pretty sure we're going to see in the next year or two, potentially breaking that threshold of, of 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming. That has been this target. Um, it will probably be temporary though. I mean, this will be a blip that is associated with El Nino, but um, important, I think that's important. But even along with that, we also expect, expect to see uh, some pretty extreme and unusual weather conditions um, that always occur with a strong El Nino, but this year will be different. The reason it's going to be different is because we have a lot of other things going on that are concerning all by themselves. So one factor that I think is gonna to contribute to a very unusual El Nino situation and the weather that it usually would, would cause is that we have a huge pool of much above normal ocean temperatures in the North Pacific. It's been there for a while. Um, and that pool of very warm water has a big influence on what the jet stream does. The jet stream is this strong current of wind high up in the atmosphere that really creates the weather that we feel across uh, North America, across Eurasia. So anything that affects the jet stream is going to have an influence our weather systems. And that, that pool of warm water, we call it an oceanic heat wave, is undoubtedly already having a big impact even before El Nino gets here. Another factor that we're looking at is the fact that most of the Atlantic Ocean right now is also much warmer than normal. I like to call it the Atlantic is running a fever. So one of the things that is usually associated with an El Nino is a relatively quiet hurricane season in the North Atlantic. And here we are uh, right at the beginning of hurricane season right now. And because there's so much warm water in the Atlantic Ocean, most people are expecting um, it to not be a very quiet hurricane season, even though we're looking at this El Nino. So uh, there's another very interesting uh, factor to keep, keep an eye on uh, what's going to happen with the hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. So one of the things, so another factor that we're always watching is what's going on in the far north in the Arctic. And once again, we're seeing the amount of sea ice up there for this time of year running at very low levels. It's in terms of the real estate it covers, but also in terms of the thickness of that sea ice. The, it's very thin. It's much thinner than it used to be 30, 40 years ago, which is a blink in time really. And so when the ice gets very thin, it's also much easier to melt it. It's much easier to push it around with unusual wind patterns, which we expect to have this, this summer. Um, so it, there's a really good potential for uh, some perhaps record-breaking sea ice conditions this summer, but also the Arctic is running very warm as well. And we know that when the Arctic is warming much faster than the globe as a whole, it also has an impact on the jet stream, which in turn affects our weather patterns all around the Northern Hemisphere. So, so we've been seeing the oceans globally warming steadily. 
And every year for the last several years, pretty much, it's set new records for the global ocean temperature and how much heat has been absorbed by the global oceans. When we go into an El Nino phase, a bunch of that heat gets released back into the atmosphere. So the greenhouse gases that we've been dumping into the atmosphere, heat, about 90% of that goes into the oceans, only 10% into the air. And But as El Nino comes along, that regulates how much of that ocean heat is uh, transferred between the ocean and the atmosphere. So in an El Nino year, we tend to see more of that heat coming out of the ocean into the air. And this tends to cause a spike in global average temperatures. El Ninos usually don't last more than a year or two. And so we expect this to be a spike, not a, a big you know, shift in um, global average surface temperatures. But it's certainly concerning uh, because it does indicate that there's just this reservoir of heat in our oceans that uh, is is going back into the atmosphere. It's causing the atmosphere generally to increase, but we also see these spikes from time to time. And it's very likely that we're going to see that threshold of 1.5 degrees C, which is the Paris Accord target um, being crossed, but most likely we'll come back down uh, below it again for a little while at least. Uh, but the trend is, you know, warmer and warmer. So unless we stop emitting these heat trapping greenhouse gases, we need to expect to see that global temperature continue to rise in a general way. So a silver lining, if you will, to this El Nino that we're potentially going to see uh, develop in the next couple of months um, is that people are now familiar with that term El Nino. They know that it means unusual weather. They're already thinking about, oh dear, you know, this is this could be this could be bad this year. Um, so it's an opportunity. It's, it's capturing the imagination. It's capturing the attention of the public, and this connection with climate, the climate crisis, the connection to ocean heat waves elsewhere, the connection to extreme weather events, and their increase in those um, in various parts of the world. In fact, there are very few places where they aren't seeing an uptick in extreme events, and the connection to what's happening in the Arctic. All of these factors coming together um, is a complicated story for the public to digest, but it also is I think fascinating for the public and it's a great opportunity for us to communicate um, bits of climate information that people can help, it can help people understand how the climate crisis is playing out even in the face of these um, natural changes like El Nino, but also these oceanic heat waves that are certainly not completely natural.